Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Creative Adventures. I've got a quickie for you today. I'm making something completely new, uh, but it's not gonna have any fancy swirls or anything like that. Today I'm making a shampoo bar. This is something I've been wanting to try for a while just because I like the idea of using a homemade natural product on my hair that I know what ingredients go into it. As part of my soap making journey, I've learned a lot about commercial soaps and shampoos and whatnot. For the most part, what you buy at a store is not truly soap. Especially the case for shampoo, it's definitely not soap. A lot of them are detergents or surfactants, and I suppose that's okay, but I definitely have noticed a difference in my skin since I've started using homemade soap only. I have extremely, extremely dry skin, and I have had extremely dry skin my entire life. Uh, it's so bad that I have problems with my feet actually cracking to the point where they bleed. I have issues with um, that happening with my elbows. And since I have started using only homemade soap, I haven't had feet cracking issues and my elbows are softer than they have ever been in my entire life. Like I remember my grandmother always telling me that it looked like my knees and elbows were dirty when I was a kid because they were just so dry and cracked. I just happened to notice the other night I was rubbing my arm and I felt my elbow and I'm like, wait, holy crap, that's actually really soft. I've never felt my skin feel this soft before. And I'm not using any lotion either. I, I actually don't really care for lotion because I don't like the feel of it on my hands. So I'm, I'm not using lotion on my skin either, but it's incredibly soft and really moisturized. And I have to admit, I'm actually really surprised that it's made such a big difference in my skin. So anyway, I've been wanting to try something similar for my hair. If I'm being completely honest, I have a feeling I'm gonna end up not liking it for my hair, mainly because I do color treat my hair a lot. I usually have bright red hair, uh, as you've seen from many of my videos, or pink, and I have a feeling that this kind of soap is going to strip a lot of the color out of my hair. However, it's summer, and we have a pool membership this year, and we're spending a lot of time in the sun, and I'm getting a lot of chlorine in my hair, and it's already stripping the color out anyway. So I've decided that for the summer, I'm going to try a shampoo bar to see how my hair likes it, since I'm having trouble keeping color in my hair anyway, and we'll just see what we think. Now, I've heard that when you go, when you make the switch from commercial shampoo to a actual soap product, a homemade soap product, there will be a transition phase where your hair gets very oily and hard to manage for two to four weeks. And then once it's kind of level set and gotten all of the product buildup from commercial products out of your hair and has started producing a normal amount of oil again, then you will actually have healthier looking, fuller, less weighed down hair. So I'm really interested to see if that actually happens. My hair is just as dry as my skin, and that's even when I don't color it. I mean, there have been periods of time where I've not color treated my hair for, you know, two or three years at a time, and my hair is still just as dry as it is when I color treat it. So I'll be interested to see if I do start producing more oils in my hair at a, at a more normal level. And I will also be interest, interested to see if I can retain any color in my hair. Um, another thing about my particular hair is that while I have a full head of hair and it's I have an, an, a lot of hair, it's very, very fine. And it always has been. The, strand, the strands themselves are very fine. So I'll be interested to see if I get more volume in the long run. So about the recipe that I'm making today. I did a lot of searching online to find kind of the holy grail of shampoo bar recipes. And everything kept bringing me back to a recipe from Liz Ardlady. Her shampoo bar, she actually makes hers hot process, but I'm going to be making it cold process today. Uh, it's a very unique mix of oils that are specific for hair, and instead of water in the recipe, I'm actually using apple cider vinegar. So I actually have my iPad over here so I could give you a couple of things I have found about why we're using some of the specific oils that we're using and some of the specific ingredients. So apple cider vinegar, I often hear of people using that as a rinse instead of a conditioner. Uh, because apple cider vinegar is actually very good at restoring the pH balance of your skin and hair, but it also uh, helps to remove buildup from products. So it's also, oh, it's also a detangler too. So 
I commonly see people use it as an after wash rinse for their hair. I have replaced all the water in my recipe with apple cider vinegar. This already has my lye mixed in. Now I'm not using a fragrance oil in this. I'm actually going to be using an essential oil in this and there were two different options that I could find that are good choices for a shampoo bar. The one I'm using is bergamot. This is an essential oil and it came from Brambleberry. It's from a Mediterranean tree. It's a sour orange, so it is a citrus, and the essential oil is made from the rind of that citrus. It does smell citrusy. It doesn't... It really does smell like an orange rind, not like the sweet part of an orange. It's very unique, but it's also very familiar, I guess. It does smell very familiar to me. It also smells kind of uh, licorice-like. Not very strong, like that's not an overpowering note, but I do get a note of licorice in it. But it's definitely predominantly citrus. So from what I've read online, this is a good essential oil for hair products, and it's also sometimes used as a hair tonic. It supposedly helps promote hair growth. It can be a serum to help tame frizzy hair. Supposedly, it also helps get rid of scalp buildup, which is exactly what we're trying to do with this product in general. So it's an all around good essential oil to use in a shampoo bar. Now, I will say this is the most expensive essential oil I have ever seen. <laughs> it's even more expensive than the lavender that I buy. I had a hard time finding this for a reasonable price. Brambleberry did have a, had the, they didn't have the best price on it, but they had the best non-bulk price on it. Fortunately, you don't need a whole lot of this. We're making a, a batch with 36 ounces of oils and we only need uh, 0.4 ounces of this essential oil. So this little bottle should go a long way for me. Now another good option for uh, shampoo bar, uh, essential oil wise, would be rosemary. Rosemary has some of the same benefits as bergamot. I did buy a bottle of, of rosemary essential oil as well because I do in the future plan to make a second batch of this just so I can decide which fragrance I actually like better. I did see the bergamot recommended more than rosemary. A final option is to actually infuse rosemary into your oils for the batch. That would be a really nice option as well. Now, like I said before, I'm not gonna add any colorants or anything to this. We're just gonna mix this batch up real quick and pop it into my 12 bar rectangular mold over here. There's not gonna be any fancy swirls or anything like that. This is just going to be a very plain batch of shampoo bars. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon and these have been sitting out all morning, so they should be exactly room temperature, yeah. We're at 75 degrees, so they should stay nice and fluid for me so I can get a nice smooth top. So let me go get my mixer and we'll get started. All right, I got my gloves on, got my mixer out. I also went and grabbed my sodium lactate. This has some so a lot of soft oils in it, so we don't wanna leave that out. We want this bar to get as hard as possible. But before I get forget, I also wanted to let you know what oils are actually in this recipe. So we've got canola oil, coconut oil, castor oil, mango seed butter, sunflower oil, and olive oil. Castor oil in particular is known to promote hair growth. I actually saw a very funny post on one of the soap making forums I'm a member of and it was a guy that had recently made a batch of soap that had a lot of castor oil in it and he had noticed that his back hair started getting nice and thick and luscious and he decided to do an experiment where he used a standard uh, soap bar that did not have any castor oil in it versus one that did and he did half of his body for a few weeks with one and then half with the other and let's just say the results were impressive. So castor oil is known to stimulate nice good hair growth so that's specifically why we're including a good amount of that in this recipe. All right I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons of sodium lactate over to my lye water. I also wanted to mention when I mixed my lye into this apple cider vinegar just be warned that it gets a lot hotter than it does with water. Uh, usually I max out at about 190 degrees with water. Uh, this got up to 210, so it actually almost got to boiling point. I thought that was kind of interesting. Let's get our lye water into our oils and get to mixing. All right, I'm going to pause here and go ahead and add my essential oil in. Like I said, we're not doing any colors or anything, so 
as soon as this reaches a light trace, I'm gonna put it in my mold. I'm gonna set that off to the side for a moment. I'm gonna get my scale out. Turn that on. And I need 0.4 ounces of this essential oil, so I'm just gonna use a pipette and weigh it in. I know that each one of these pipettes is about 0.1. Go. All right, let's mix this up the rest of the way. All right, we're at the absolute lightest of trace. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. Now I've got my 12 bar mold over here just sitting on a sheet tray as usual so that it makes it easier to transport and I'm just going to try to carefully pour some of this into each cavity. I need enough for 11 apparently. made to be the difference in not adding any color into this thing. Okay, there we have it. Now, like I said earlier, this is this recipe does have a lot of soft oils in it, so I'm not quite sure how long it's going to need to sit before we unmold it. I'm gonna guess this one's gonna take a little bit longer than normal. So I'm gonna move this into my craft room and get it put to bed, so to speak, and we'll come back in a few days when it's ready to unmold and show you the finished product. Hey guys, welcome back. So I decided not to show the unmolding of this soap because, I mean, honestly, it's just a plain old bar of soap with no fancy colors or anything. But I did leave this in the mold for about a week and a half before trying to unmold it. Not because I felt like it needed that long, I just didn't need the soap right away anyway, so I just left it sitting in my craft room. But it hardened up really nice and solid, came out of the mold super, super cleanly. And I'm real happy with just how this soap looks in general. Um, if you'll remember, we didn't use any colorant in this at all. So this is just the color of the natural soap itself. And I actually think it's really nice and creamy and pretty. It smells, it smells really good too. It's like a really, really mild citrus scent, but a very, um, it smells like a citrus rind. It's, that's exactly what it smells like. I've actually been using this in my hair for a couple of days now. I can't give you a proper verdict on it yet. It's definitely not been long enough. The first day I used it, yesterday morning, I actually also tried another new product at the same time, which was a styling cream, and it was an absolute disaster. The styling cream made my hair get sticky and clumpy and gross, so uh, that wasn't really a proper test. I did use it today, and I still don't think I've gotten all of that styling cream out of all of my hair, but on the crown and top of my head, where I know I got all of that cream out, my hair actually feels really, really nice and soft. My husband's using it too, and his hair feels nice and soft too, but he does say that it feels almost like his hair is heavier on his head. So I haven't noticed that with mine, but I don't know. I have a lot more hair than he does. All in all, I am very happy with the shampoo bar. I'll definitely be giving you a proper update on using the shampoo bar once I've been using it for probably about a month. From everything I've read, there's definitely a two to four week transition period when switching from shampoo to a shampoo bar like this that's an actual soap. So I wanna be sure I give it a proper test before telling you guys what I think about making the switch. If you like this video and like learning how to make this nice creamy shampoo bar, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments or suggestions for future projects, let me know down below because I'd love to hear from you. Until next time on Creative Adventures.